Hey, this is Kat from Red Mountain Shaman, and I share shamanic wisdom through dreams, visions, nature, synchronicities, intuition, channeling, art, music, photography, and shamanic journeys. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm going to be taking a break this weekend, so I will be releasing my Sunday video early this week, so that's why you're getting this now. So I hope you all enjoy, but today I'm just going to be sharing a short channeled message from the Thunder Beings, and some of you that may have had a lot of religious indoctrination like me, I at first thought speaking to Thunder Beings was a very strange thing. But uh, shamanism is really based on animism. And animism is just the belief that everything has consciousness. And I believe that there is a spark of God that runs through everything, including the elements and the thunder. So the Native Americans like to call the element of thunder the thunder beings. And I feel very deeply connected to this element. And so that's who I'm going to be channeling today. So another thing I'm going to be sharing um, is a message about the 12 stones and the broken altar that I saw in the Akashic Records last week, as well as the symbolism of the pelican spirit animal that I encountered this week. So we were walking our dog at the pond yesterday, and a storm rolled over us. And like I said, thunder is one of my favorite sounds, and I feel deeply connected. And its low rumble moves slowly over our heads. And then we saw three huge pelicans take off from the trees and they landed on the pond together. This was so magical, I decided to tap in and see if there was any messages from the Thunder Beings when I got home. And this is what I wrote down as I heard them speaking to me. We greet you this stormy day of May to impart our wisdom as beings of the element of thunder. Our sound resonates deep within your soul as you have been with us for time immemorial. You are a thunderbird. You have given and received wisdom from the realms of thunder and lightning. You are an electric being. You will be entering a new phase on earth as a collective. You are moving into higher frequencies of light. Those who cannot hold the light within themselves will be choosing at a soul level to depart to other spheres of consciousness and experiences. Those who choose to remain are well within their bounds to work with the Great Spirit in order to transform and transition into the light of a new dawn of existence. Nothing can stop the light, nothing can escape the light, for a new timeline is at hand those with eyes to see are already on the golden road to rebuilding and regenerating and restoration of all that has been stolen and destroyed. The three pelicans you witness beneath our thunder are harbingers of change. They hold the white light within their feathers. They hold fortitude and sustenance within their great beaks. Their great wings carry them to safety and solitude within the stillness of the pond. They break away from the pack and they unify together as three. They huddle in the rain of commotion. They carry the Christ light of the number three. They ride out the storm with grace and confidence. They are a family, a tribe, bringing in the light for those who are left in the wake of confusion and fear. They create a nest of peace and healing for those who cross their path. Stay the course of the red road and follow the divine guidance within your heart. Be the lantern and show the way. As religion crumbles, many will need a safe place to land. Hold out your loving arms to catch them with the wisdom and truth of the Alpha and Omega. Bring forth the Essene wisdom of Yeshua for others to behold. Get ready for the fall of the corrupt, for in the coming months many will face the light of the one true Creator and stand under the spotlight for all to see. The tribes of Israel shall be cleansed and remembered. 
They have been deeply wounded, and purification will bring healing. The twelve stones upon the broken altar is the twelve tribes, and this altar will indeed be repaired with the fire of the Most High. The tribes will come together once again in dance and song as the sacred hoop of unity is mended. The gemstones will be put back into their rightful places. The walls of the New Jerusalem will be fortified with these stones and their innate frequencies. You will be surrounded in bliss frequencies as earth continues her ascent back into the light. Hang on tight as purification is still in progress in order to allow this healing to ensue. There is more to come about this exciting time in history as earth continues to receive new light codes of consciousness. And so it is. We are the thunder beings and we bring you this message from the realms of light and sound. Aho and amen. Thank you, Thunder Beings. So what they are saying is that um, there are going to be more people that are deciding to exit the planet. And for those who are staying to be the beacon of light for them. And I decided to also look up the pelican and they can be messengers between the earthly and the spiritual realms. They can symbolize family connection, self-care, triumph over obstacles, revival, reinvention, prosperity, being on the right path, imagination and creativity, nurturing and sacrifice, finding innovative new solutions, thinking outside of the box, good luck and fortune, abundance, protection, adaptability and resilience. Pelicans can also represent being able to be strong when problems come and to keep going until we win over the problems. So I do intuitively feel like things are going to uh, kind of get worse in the world before things get better, but you can still remain in a high frequency and be on your own path as these things are crumbling around you. And in the Akashic Records this week, I did see a balloon, which was interesting, and it was pink, and it was rising into the sky. So I felt like that represented the divine feminine force rising and also celebration. So I do think that there is a celebration coming. And that's also what the Thunder Being said. And I think that's what they're talking about when the sacred hoop is mended and the tribes are gathered together again in song and dance. So then I looked up the stones in the altar and a lot of um, evangelical or, or, you know, traditional Christian people, I, I hear them saying, oh, crystals are new age, but actually crystals are in the Bible. And the ones that are these um, 12 stones on the altar in the Bible, and they represent the 12 tribes of Israel. And they are carnelian, chrysolite, emerald, turquoise, amethyst, sapphire, jacinth, if I said that right, agate, crystal, beryl, lapis lazuli, and jasper. In Joshua 4, 1 through 3, they are described as representing each of the 12 tribes and a sign to future generations that the mighty works and power of God are for their posterity or their children's children. Elijah repaired or built a new altar with the 12 stones from the broken altar at Mount Carmel. Moses also constructed an altar at the foot of Mount Sinai with 12 pillars, which also represented the 12 tribes of Israel. And if you'd like to hear the song that I wrote over a decade ago before I even knew that this was a biblical thing, I think I was channeling the words to this song. The song is called A Dozen Stones, and you can visit that song on our Bandcamp site. Just go to Bandcamp and search Paladine. It's spelled P-A-L-O-D-I-N-E, and you can hear that song, and I might post a link below too. So I feel like Moses is going to have more to say about all of this and how it relates to our current times. Like I said, it was for the, a sign for future generations or their children's children. So that could be the time that we're in now. And I think that's why this symbolism is coming up again for me. And they're trying to show me this. So I'll likely be calling on Moses for more information in my next video. 
So I decided to ask Great Spirit to um, pull a card for this video that went kind of went along with it, and it's from the White Light Oracle Guidebook from Alana Fairchild. And in the book it says, it's number 19, and it's called Solve Paludi. And it says, tune into your heart and you will be able to find your way through any negative or toxic situation. Engage in self-healing and space clearing. Commit to regular practices that help you connect to your inner light. Your light shall not be overcome by any darkness or negativity. Take time to clean your heart and mind of negativity by focusing on the divine beings that bring your heart joy. It is appropriate for you to desire your own personal and sacred space and access it daily. We live in an age of heightened environmental, emotional, and spiritual pollution. During such a world age, it takes more work to experience clarity, purity, and originality. Often the bulk of our challenge is simply warding off further negative influences and attempting to dislodge the toxins permeating our energy field psychologically, physically, and emotionally. The onslaught continues with chemical toxins in foods, polluted oceans with contaminant sea life, and the bombardment of electromagnetic radiation. When technological development lacks commensurate wisdom, such is the current case. Progress contains a shadow side of harm to our planet and her creatures, including us humans. Higher beings are lovingly and faithfully working to assist souls in their transition from fear to a love-based inner orientation and to become strong enough to ward off further negative influences and reverse the toxic culture within themselves and our world. A shift is available for hearts willing to exchange the constant battle with relentless negativity for being a source of light, love, and peaceful abiding on this planet. When these hearts reside in an inner place of purity, they are able to bring unconditional love and spacious primordial wisdom into our world for the spiritual benefit of all beings. With their positive enthusiasm for the healing for all beings, they can do much good in the world. To be around such hearts instills peace and relaxation, hopefulness, and vitality within the soul. The frequency of 741 hertz cleans things up. Solve Paludi is a Latin expression, which means to clear pollutants and toxins. This frequency focuses on clearing, freeing the hold of negativity, and allowing the natural way of bright, beautiful manifestation to unfold. This frequency works to clear infections and electromagnetic radiation from the body. It also attunes one to the harmonics of the quantum field, the reorganizing principle of the higher self, which knows what you are and how to dislodge and disengage from that which is inauthentic and obstructive to your radiant being. When this oracle appears in a reading, it is a call to clear yourself and your space in ways that feel affirming, inspiring, and beautiful for you. Trust that no matter how much gunk the ego-driven actions of humans might generate, it is no match for the power of spirit at play in willing human hearts. May all such hearts join with spirit and with each other to clear and bless all creatures for the greatest good. And now I'm going to read the healing process. And if you would like to do a short meditation with me, um, it might be good to wait until you're not driving or operating machinery, but I'll read that to you now. Bring your awareness into the present moment as you ground yourself by feeling your feet connecting to the earth. Let there be a feeling of pleasant heaviness as your feet pull the energy down from your heart and toward the earth. It is as if the feet can discharge unwanted energies, which the earth mother, with her alchemical skill of transmutation, 
can utilize as fertilizer for new life. Place a hand over your heart. Feel your connection with yourself, with the light within, with the spiritual vastness that is the light within your heart. See, imagine, feel, or intend that the heart connection to the spiritual light is becoming stronger and more powerful as you gently tune your awareness to it. If you can relax and allow it, that intelligent inner light will begin to clear, cleanse, heal, renew, and protect you from within your cells. It will move out into all aspects of your life. You may feel this at a subtle level, but even if you feel nothing, you can trust that it is happening anyway. You can further empower your process with this prayer. I call upon the pure white light for cleansing, realignment, renewal, and protection now. May I be protected from all negativities, purged from all malignant energies, and held in the sanctity of the light in all dimensions of my being. I shed and release that which obstructs my luminous and true nature. Through divine mercy and grace for the spiritual benefit of all beings, so be it. When you are ready, ground yourself and hydrate well. You have completed the healing process. So I hope you all have a beautiful weekend and I myself will be doing a technology detox, trying to stay off my phone and computer as much as I can this weekend. And thank you all for being here and please share my videos with like-minded people. Press like, subscribe, leave a comment, sharing your own synchronicities if you'd like. And if you'd like your own channeled message, energy work or readings, or would like to just donate to my channel, please visit redmountainshaman.com to learn more. Until next week, sending you all love. Take care.